To apply formatting to your text, like up here on the Home tab in the Font Group to make your text bold, as you can see when I hover over the letter B in the pop-up, it says it's bold. And the shortcut keys are Control B in case if you don't want to click on the command here, you can shortcut it. And you also have italics, underline, in any case to do any of that, first off you have to select your text that you want to apply the formatting to. So go ahead and click and drag to select it, and then I'll select Step 1 spiritually. Now when I select it, if I move my mouse up and over to the right, it brings up the mini formatting toolbar, which has a list of the more popular commands found up there on the ribbon in the font group. And so there it is, B for bold, I for italics. When I move over and down and away from it, it disappears. Move over and up to the right, it's permanently gone. Until I go ahead and reselect the same text or right click on the selection, and it brings up the mini formatting toolbar in addition to the shortcut menu here. Let me go ahead and click off. Now notice that when I select it, it not only selects the text, but also selects the picture next to it. Why is it doing that? Well, look over here at the anchor. Hover over it. You can see in the pop-up, it says the selected object is anchored to the document text here, meaning that the picture is anchored to this paragraph. How do I know that that's a paragraph, not just a line or a soft return? Well, we can find out by coming up here, neighbor, on the Home tab to the Paragraph group, and click on Show Codes. As you recall, we did this in an earlier training video, and there she is, the little tiny paragraph code. And as you recall, any time you hit the Enter key on the keyboard, it adds a paragraph marker. So even though this is one line here, it's got its own paragraph marker, so it's also its own paragraph. And down below it's got a bunch of lines, but between this paragraph marker and that one, all these lines make up this paragraph here, or are tied to this paragraph marker. So what this means is that when I go ahead and click before and hit enter, it takes the image and keeps it with that paragraph and moves it down correspondingly. Let me go ahead and hit undo. So because when I click and drag and I select it, and it goes over and it selects the paragraph marker, so it's got everything selected, meaning the picture as well, if I don't want to include that, then what I can do is one of two things. Let me click off, try to reselect it this time when it goes over and it highlights the paragraph marker, go over to it and then pull it back and let go. Okay, that worked for me this time, but it's 50-50 that it works for me because I'm not always that steady when using the mouse. So let's try it again. If I don't want to play with it and go over and back and back and over and it's getting too hard, just go ahead and let it select it all. Then holding down the shift key, hit the back arrow or the arrow going to the left, and the shift is for selecting, but because we're going back to what was selected, it deselects it. So the paragraph marker is no longer selected, and hence the image is not selected as well. Cool. Let's come up here and turn off the codes, so those don't get in the way of our artistic design here, by coming up here on the Home tab to the font group, making it bold, italics, or the shortcut keys, Control i made it italics, and we can also change the color. Now, the letter A with the red underneath it, that's the default color. So if I click on it, it applies red. But if I don't want it to be red, then click on its corresponding drop down arrow and choose hey, look at all these colors. You have theme colors and standard colors. So you can see down below that the standard color that's currently being applied is the one that's outlined in red, and it's hover over it red. If you want to choose something that's like red in the theme color, hover over it, and it says it's not just red, but it's red accent to lighter 40%. And that's important because if you want to be able to collaborate with somebody in Word and say, hey, choose red, are you talking a theme color? And if it's a theme color, what level of red are we at? Is it red accent to darker 25% or lighter 40%? In any case, you can get more particular. And if you want to get even more particular, go down to more colors, and you can see there's the standard colors, and if you want to get more custom, click on custom. And you can see that red, the color model, has the number 255 and nothing for green or blue. So you can go ahead and come in here and change that and apply 50, and then hit your tab key, and you can see it's getting a little bit of a lighter shade of red. Let's add some blue, and let's do 50 there and see what happens. Oh, maybe less red. How about if we go down to 25? Oh, now we're getting out of control. In any case, you can type it in down there to set your own custom color, or just click anywhere up here, or drag it around. Notice how it updates the RGBs, and you can change it from a darker shade to a lighter shade. And basically, just go ahead and give them the numbers here for the RGB, because when I click OK, and the colors apply, and I click on the corresponding drop-down arrow, it's nothing here in the theme colors that's highlighted that I can hover over and say, that's what it is, dark blue or blue 
or even a standard color, but when I hover over it down here, it says it's aqua. And it chose aqua because that's the closest color it resembles. So what you want to do is go back to more colors, custom tab, and say, look, go ahead and type these in to get the same color that I've got. So let's go ahead and close out of there and change the color to something more friendly, a standard color like green. And to apply that same color to other parts of our document, well, just go ahead and select the text. I'll do a double click and notice over in the mini formatting toolbar, the letter A is no longer red underlined. It shows the more recent color that was applied, green. So I can click on it to apply green or come up here. It's also up there in the font group or you can repeat the color by using the shortcut keys control Y. As you recall in an earlier training video up here on the quick access toolbar, if you make a mistake, you undo it. But if you want to redo an undo, you'd click on the redo. But the reason why it's not redoing it and it's saying repeat is because repeat will perform the most recent action that was applied. The only time that this becomes a redo is when you undo something. So our most recent action was applying green. So go ahead and select something else, double click and come up here and click on redo and it applies green or the shortcut keys. Let me double click, control Y and it applies there. So if I go ahead and hit undo, it says now that you undid something, do you want to redo it? So it's a double agent, it converts to the redo. If I go ahead and say yes, then it redoes what I undid and it converts it to a repeat, so I can go ahead and continue on by repeating or using the shortcut keys control Y, the color green. You also have the shortcut key F4, but if I select this, or well, let me click and drag and select that, hit F4, will also apply the most recent formatting, in this case, the color. And when I say the most recent formatting, also if I go ahead and double click here and do underline, and double click over here and hit F4, that's the most recent formatting. Underlines that as well. Now let's come up here and then do all that. Well, let me go ahead and right click and do green. I like that. And in fact, let's go ahead and select this and change the font type. Well, there's my mini formatting toolbar. Move up and over to the right from Times New Roman, which is the current font. Click on the corresponding drop down arrow, or you can come up here on the home tab in the font group and click on it up there. You have your theme fonts, recently used fonts, and all the fonts, and I'll explain the difference between the theme fonts and all the fonts, but in any case, if you've got a particular font you're looking for with it highlighted up above, you can go ahead and just type in the name of it instead of, well, you can scroll, scroll, it's sorted alphabetically, but let me go ahead and just type in C-O-M, and there you go. Come up here with C-O-M, and it fills in the rest as I get close to something that's specific, like Comic Sans, if that's the one I want, with the rest of it highlighted, hit the tab key and it applies it. Let me go ahead and select this again and pull it back so it doesn't select the image. In addition to what you have up here, now taking it one step at a time, the mini formatting toolbar has more popular commands of what's in the font group. And if you want more than what's in the font group, then you can come over here and click on its expandable dialog box button, that little arrow, or you can use the shortcut keys, control D. Let me click on it. Control D will open up the same window. In any case, you get the same commands that you have on the mini formatting toolbar and also in the font group, like the font type, the font size, and some additional ones down below, effects like strike through. You can see down the preview window before you click okie dokie, it puts a line through it. Strike through would be something like if you had a sale, you had $50, the retail price, you put a strike through that. The next to it, you have the sale price, which could be 25 bucks. Buy now. In any case, you can go through that. You also have some text effects down below. Click on that button. And let's expand the text field by clicking on the triangle, turning it down. So you can say no fill. You don't want any color. Or you can do a solid fill, which right now is green. You can do a gradient fill. Oh, you can get really fancy with that. We'll talk about gradients in a later training video, but right now I want to keep it simple. Solid fill, you can have transparency. You can do a text outline. So if the solid fill is green, how about we do a solid line of, click on the paint bucket, red. Red and green, Christmas colors. You can scroll down to see additional options here, like the width of the line around the text. In any case, let's go ahead and click okie dokie and take a look at it. Ooh, that's a bit harsh in the preview. I'm not sure I want to go ahead and click OK to show you that, but I can do that because I can click off and go, this doesn't work for me, and undo it. And go back to a simple green. So going back to where we were, we have what formats applied to the text here. We have up here bold, italics, the color green. 
You can imagine if you had more applied to it, like the outline color, maybe a shadow to it. Well, you can click on the expandable dialog box button, text effects, and go to the shadows. In any case, you get quite a few options here. Let's do a preset, come down below and do perspective upper right. Click okie dokie, click okie dokie. Ooh, the shadow's applying just to that word, not this over here. And the reason why is because I didn't have it selected when I went to apply the text effects. So wherever the cursor's at, it'll apply to that word. So if I want to apply to all of it, then I have to go ahead and select it all and pull back and then go ahead and do the text effects. In any case, when you want to apply the same formatting, all the formats you applied to the words here to like step two, can you remember all that? So you can come down here and select step two physically and go, okay, here we go again. Bold, italics, green. Well, that's too much for me. Stay with me in the next training video and I'll show you a shortcut. Phew, thanks for coming. I never thought you'd make it, but I gave you a teaser. And so what we wanted to do is we want to be able to take the formatting applied to the text here and apply it to the other text down below without having to select it and try to remember everything that's applied up there. And the shortcut for that is, is to first go ahead and click inside the text that you want to copy the formatting from and then come up here on the home tab to the clipboard group and it's right there. That's the guy, Format Painter. And you can see in the pop-up it says, or it asks, like the look of a particular selection? You can apply that look to other content in the document right now. All you have to do is go ahead and click on it and then come down and you can see that the eye beam now has a brush to the left of it. So it pulls in the formatting that's surrounding the flashing cursor. And with my brush, I can go ahead and click and drag and pull back and let go. And hey, wasn't that fancy? It took all that formatting and just slapped it right on there. Now you'll notice that my brush has disappeared. So if I want to continue, because I've got a lot more work to do, then again, go ahead and click back into the formatting that you want to copy to the brush. And you can either come up here, of course, you don't have to click on it up here, but notice that when you hover over it, you get the shortcut keys that if you click inside the text that you want to copy the formatting from, instead of clicking on the brush, do Control Shift C, and then go ahead and select the place that you want to apply the formatting to and do Control Shift V. So with it flashing in there, instead of going up there and clicking on the paintbrush, you can also right click on it, bring up the mini formatting toolbar because, hey, he's right there as well. And this time, instead of clicking on them once to do a single paint job, you want to double click really fast. Because when you double click really fast, then you can go ahead and not only do one job, but hey, the paintbrush is still up. You can go down and do the rest of the jobs. And we've got one more. And we're done. But the paintbrush isn't disappearing. Well, you can go ahead and flick it really fast. No, don't do that. You'll get formatting everywhere. Instead, you can either come up here and deselect the paintbrush or just hit the escape key on the keyboard and the brush disappears. And we just have our eye beam. Now here's another shortcut that I think you might find useful. We already talked about it in fact. It was the F4 key. Let me go ahead and scroll up. Remember the F4 key, like when I apply a formatting, I double click here and I make it bold, italics, underline, will only apply the most recent format. What was the most recent? It was the underline. So when I go ahead and select something else and hit the F4 key on the keyboard, it just does the underline. Let me go ahead and hit undo a couple of times there. So what you can do is that instead of coming up here and applying everything from the font group, if you expand the dialog box, so let's see, down below in the preview window, I have the word clean selected. If I go ahead and make it, let's come up here and type in M-O-N-O -O for mono to bring up monotype Corsiva. We'll leave it regular and 18. Well, that looks pretty good. Change the color. Let's do red. And maybe we can click on and do an underline style. And then when we're done, when we click OK, it applies it, right? But this time, when I go ahead and select something else and I hit the F4 key, it applies everything, not just the most recent, because the recent is in front. When I go behind, open up the dialog box, everything I do within there, it's like doing a single recent action, because when I click on it, everything here, when I click OK, applies all that as the most recent action, so it applies everything that I did within that window right here. Now, if you closed out of the document and you open it back up, and you're like, uh oh, I made a mistake here. I don't want the comma to be in red or have that formatting applied to it. You can go ahead and click and drag it. And then to clear it off, 
If you don't want to go ahead and come up here and deselect the I, the U, change it from monotype Corsiva to the body of the font, things like that, then come up here on the Home tab to the Font Group and click on Clear All Formatting. Hey, wasn't that slickery? And in fact, you know what? I may want to do it just for all this here and then come up here and clear it all as well. Next, if you want to be able to highlight parts of the document, you know, not apply formatting to it, but more like a book, you got your highlighter. Well, up here on the Home tab in the Font Group, you do have one here. It's the text highlight color. So the default's yellow. If you don't want yellow, you can go ahead and click on the drop-down arrow and choose something else. And really, the only thing that works for me is yellow, so I'll go ahead and choose yellow. And then come down below, and you can see that to the left, or kind of through the I-beam, is that little marker. So wherever I click and drag, that's where it's going to highlight. Nice. Click and drag and double click. Double click. And then if I go ahead and double click over it, it deselects it, which brings up a good point. If you're done with the highlighter, then you can hit the escape key on the keyboard. And if you want to unhighlight this, you can go ahead and select it and come up here and click on clear all formatting. Does it do it? No. You actually have to do the unhighlight option which is, when well, you can click off, just come up here and then click on the drop down arrow and say that you want no color. When you say no color, you actually get the highlighter that when you click and drag over it, says no color. You hit the escape key. And then finally, one more thing that's kind of tied to what we talked about earlier in this training video, that when you select and includes the paragraph marker, it actually selected the image. Well, let me get you started on this. And what I'm talking about is, let me select these two guys right here. Two separate paragraphs, right? How do we know? Come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and turn on the codes. And you see those paragraph markers? If I go ahead and say, I want to be able to convert this into a list, up here in the Paragraph group, and I go, let's do Numbers 1, 2. You can see that it's now numbered 1, 2. But if I go ahead and let's click and drag and just want to format Read More, Remember, you just want to select the text and not the paragraph marker because when I click on bold, it won't bold the entire paragraph. Now, what does that include? Let me go ahead and right click and deselect that and then left click and select the paragraph marker as well and click on bold. It actually includes the number one, the listed item, which it matches. I mean, everything's in bold. But if I come back here and let's say I turn off my codes and I'm like, uh, this shouldn't be in bold and I click and drag and I select it without including the paragraph marker, and I deselect B for bold. Well, number one, it's still bold because I didn't include that paragraph marker at the end. Well, I can't see because the codes aren't on, but it allows me to select it. And you can see right there, bold is being applied to that paragraph marker. So when I deselect it, it will remove the bold from the corresponding number, the list item here for read more. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.